I got it! Oh, good morning everybody. Welcome to my storeroom. This is where I keep all my Christmas decorations and I'm getting excited because December the 1st is coming up and that's when our family puts up our decorations. And sometimes I put things away and make it a little bit hard on myself to find everything. But anyway, I found what I was looking for, a candy cane. I wanted to tell you a little bit about a candy cane. I just read this little thing called The Legend of the Candy Cane. And it tells you all about why we use these at Christmas time or why we eat these at Christmas time. And the legend says that there was this town that had people that lived on the mountaintop and people that lived in the valley. And the people on the mountaintop wanted to share something good with the people in the valley, but they wanted to give them something that they could afford to give. And so they decided, well, a little old man decided that the candy cane was the way to go. It was made of candy, it was small, it was cost effective, and it represented everything good about Christmas. It represented Jesus. Remember last year we did our thing with the J, the J for Jesus. And this way is like the shepherd's crook, which is for guiding and leading people, which is what Jesus did. But there's more to it than that. Did you know that its flavor is peppermint because it's representing hyssop, which is like from the mint family, which was used in sacrifice, well, in the sacrificial process of sprinkling blood. And anyway, if you want to, you can get one of these from me sometime and you can learn about it yourself. But for now, I'm going to continue putting up my Christmas decorations. But I better actually start with a joke for you. I have one from Lydia. Lydia sent a joke. This is her second one that she sent in. And I want to thank you, Lydia, for your joke. Much appreciated. This is what she said. What did the cat say when it looked in the mirror? What did the cat say when it looked in the mirror? I know I haven't had a cat. Well, I don't think I've had a cat that looked in mirrors. I've had a cat that looked in toilets, but not mirrors. But anyway, what did the cat say when it looked in the mirror? Perfect. Perfect. I can't quite say it. Perfect. Perfect. Good one, Lydia. Great joke. Prize for you in the mail. Guys, send us in some jokes if you want a prize. We love hearing them. I like to get a good old giggle and it reminds me of you, which is great to see. Anyway, we've got more for you today. We're going to speak to you about Jesus is. In the meantime, I'm going to pass this on to see if anybody else has anything to say about the candy cane. Catch you soon. Hey, you HK. How are you going? Hope you're doing well. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Justin. I'm one of the UHK leaders. It's so good to be back. I'm absolutely shattered that I still haven't seen you guys since what, March or something like that, which is absolutely crazy. Um, but I hope you're all doing well. Um, you know, I hope you're all enjoying being back at school and everything like that as well. But uh, as you can see, I've got a, a candy cane here. And um, I think as we head into that festive season or that December time, you know, Christmas time and all that sort of stuff, um, you know, I was looking at the candy cane and I was actually really encouraged by what the candy cane actually represents. And if you didn't know, the candy cane flipped upside down is actually a J. And we all know someone very important, this letter in their name. Oh, it's actually the first letter of their name. For those of you who are struggling to figure out who it is, the person's name is Jesus. He's you know, he's the reason. He's the reason for the season, as some people say. Um, but what is also encouraging is that when we flip it, we also get a shepherd crook. And I think something as simple as a candy cane, um, you know, is able to remind us that, you know, Jesus is not only the reason for the season, but he is also a shepherd. And, you know, he's a shepherd leading his sheep, which just encouraged me all the more to kind of share a bit more about the candy cane. Um, and, you know, as we continue to venture into this festive season, I hope that, um, you know, as each and every one of you guys see these little bad boys, um, these candy canes a bit more, I hope that, you know, you're being reminded of Jesus and stuff like that as well. But let's get into it. I have my hat here. We're going to start with some stamina. Um, so for today... I've got some 
activities or some exercises in this hat. Um, we're gonna pull one out and for 60 seconds, we're gonna do that activity as many times as we possibly can. So, what are we doing today? Alrighty, let's have a look. Ooh, today we got star jumps, jumping jacks, whatever you wanna call them. So for those of you who are unaware of what a, a star jump is or a jumping jack, it's simply just jumping into a star, just like that, just like that. Very simple. And we're gonna do that for a total of 60 seconds. So without further ado, if you're not up already, let's get up, let's get warmed up and let's get into it in five, four, three, two, one, let's go. How good is this? How good is this? Man, I am sweating now. Um, not only is it really hot out in the sun, but that exercise is, you know, I'm still, still catching my breath. But before we continue, just wanted to make sure that you guys have everything ready for what's to come throughout the rest of the day. Um, just a reminder to make sure you've got your journals with you, your, your pencils or your markers um, every week. Um, as you know, these things are always required for when we're taking notes or doing activities or whatever else that, uh, you know, the pens and markers and journals are required for. Um, but also, um, there'll be a list of items that'll pop up on the screen shortly um, for just a few other items that you guys are gonna need throughout the rest of the lesson today. But without further ado, let's hear what what you gotta know. Somebody asks you, what's up? You tell them. My heavenly father is the best. Did you know you are a child of God? It's true. Even I am a child of God. I want my bottle. No, man, I mean that God is our heavenly father. He ain't never gonna leave us and he ain't never gonna fail us. Best of all, our Heavenly Father is everlasting. That means he gonna last forever. Forever. That's a long... <laughs> yeah, we get it. It's a long time. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. My Heavenly Father is the best. And that right there is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my savior. Skittles out. Merry Christmas, baby.
and we're back how good was that now before we continue on with today's lesson are you guys ready for a game because I'm ready for a game now today's game was actually prepared specially by Marie and she has provided me with some simple instructions she actually provided me with an envelope um, that not only has an image inside but has some clear instructions on the back as to what it is that we're going to be drawing today. So today's game is called Quick Draw. Um, so if you haven't got a paper plate, your journal is perfectly fine. My paper plate is blank, just showing you guys that so you know that I'm drawing in real time. You know this is live, it's gonna be hilarious. Um, but essentially what we're gonna do, the instructions on the back here, I'm gonna read them out. And as I do, I'm gonna hold this plate on my head and draw at the same time. So I don't know what I'm drawing or what it's gonna look like but it's gonna be hilarious. So, I'm just gonna pop this down so I can draw at the same time. <clears throat> Here we go. Let's get into it. If you've got your journals ready or your paper plates, get your markers or your pencils, and let's get straight into it. So, instruction number one. Draw a straight line as the floor. So, figure out where you wanna do it and just go for it. Goodness me, I, that didn't even feel straight, but we'll go with it. Number two, or step number two, draw a fireplace connected to the floor. Alrighty, hopefully that, uh, that's connected. Step number three, draw a Christmas tree next to your fireplace. Yikes, this is not gonna look good. Step number four, ooh. Draw a star on top of your Christmas tree. Goodness me, I don't even know if I can draw a star, but we'll see how we go. Step number four, draw some presents under your Christmas tree. Yikes. Now, I don't know what's happened here or what this is gonna look like, but I reckon it's gonna be hilarious. Um, what I'm going to do is in the envelope that Marie, in the envelope that Marie actually gave, there was a, an image in there, which I'm just pulling out now. Now, this is exactly what I drew. Goodness me, I don't even know what I was drawing there. Hey, you know what, the stars on the tree though, that counts. I'm with that, I'm for that. My fireplace is underground, I don't know what's going on there. But that is actually hilarious. But this is what I was supposed to draw, and this is what I drew, oh my goodness. We all know that I need some practice in drawing, but uh, this is absolutely hilarious. I cannot believe how bad I did. But you know what? I'm, I'm still calling this a win. I hope you guys absolutely crush this game. I hope you guys had some fun with this and are absolutely laughing at this. Um, and remember to send your results to Marie. Um, she loves hearing from each and every one of you guys. Um, and just remember to send those results to marie at unihillchurch.com.au. But that's it for today's game. This has actually been so fun. I would love to do this again. Um, even with you guys in person when I see you guys next. Um, awesome game, Marie. Thank you for that. Um, but let's see what else we're going on for today. Today, we're going to be continuing the series, as you know, Jesus Is, and it's all about Christmas, which is exciting. And today, we're going to talk to you about another name that was used to describe Jesus in Isaiah's prophecy. But I have a question for you. Did you know that I'm related to you? Not only that, but did you know that Dale's also related to you? It's true. Everyone who's a Christian, that's right, all Christians are related. And you didn't, do you know why? It's because we have the same father. I know I'm probably confusing you. I promise it will be explained. But first, I want you to check out this awesome Spelling Bee contestants and see how they are doing.
Hello, and welcome to the third annual Pewaukee Spelling Bee and Christmas Festival. I'm your judge, Judy. We're just a few weeks away from Christmas, so that's the focus of our spelling bee, and all of our words have to do with Christmas. Let's get right to the spelling bee action and meet our final contestants. Buster busted. Uh, Buster, did you eat a donut from the staff room? Those are only for those who are volunteering for the spelling bee. No. Oh, what, this? Uh, this is a rash. I'm very sensitive about it. Okay, our other contestants are Ima DeGratis. Wait a second. Ima, did you also take a donut? Yeah, but it's okay because I won the spelling bee. Nobody has won yet. We still have more rounds to go. Yeah, I haven't technically won yet, but look at me and then look at these two. Enough said. And our final contestant is Rex Sponge Muffin. Actually, my name is pronounced Crispy Bacon. Crispy Bacon? Are you kidding me? <sighs> okay, I'll make the adjustment. Could you spell it for me, please? Uh, sure. But can you use it in a sentence for me, please? No. But thank you, Rex, for not eating one of the donuts from the break room. You're welcome. I'm saving mine for later. Well, you should all know the drill by now. I will call a contestant to the mic, and he or she will spell the word I give them. You have 30 seconds to spell the word, or you are disqualified. Up next is Ima. Woohoo! Woohoo! Thank you, thank you. I don't know what to say. Put this on. I just wanted to thank me, obviously, for being gooder at this than these two muffin poppers. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, who let me miss school to be here, well, he didn't let me, but when he hears about me winning, I'm sure I'll get out of that suspension. Um, oh, and for my turtle, Jasper, this one's for you, bud. And... Um, uh, Ima, I have to stop you there. You didn't win the spelling bee. What? You didn't win. But you called my name. I called your name to spell a word. We still have several rounds to go. All right, fine. But I'm keeping the crown. That's fine. You brought that here. How about we get on with the spelling bee? Yeah, yeah, okay. Ima, your word to spell is everlasting. Uh, I'd like to phone a friend. Um, that, that is not an option. Ima, you can't call someone. Shh. Hello? Mr. Jenkins? Yes? Hey, I just wanted to let you know that I'm about to win the spelling bee. No, you... Wow, that's great, Alma. Why aren't you at school? This is the best Christmas gift ever! I mean, all the hard work and effort and hours and hours of watching TV. I have to thank the other contestants, Ricky and Coleslaw. <coughs> it's been a roller coaster, but I nailed that last word ever... What was that word? Everlasting. Right, and I was about to spell it, and I felt the fear of the panda upon me, and I mustered up the courage. I think I'll use the prize money to buy a giant boat so I can take my mom on a sailing trip around the world. Next, I'll buy a dolphin and... Wait, what just happened? Well, if Ima would have actually attempted the word, she could have asked for more information about her word, everlasting which is one of the many words used in the book of Isaiah to describe Jesus in the prophecy about his birth. Isaiah wrote that Jesus was the everlasting Father. He has always been, and he will always be. You'll hear more about what everlasting Father means in your lesson today, but for now, we're going to go to a commercial break. Hey, where are my flowers? So now do you get it? Jesus is also called our Heavenly Father. And as a result of that, we are brothers and sisters. All right, 
It's time for our Bible lesson. Matthew chapter 1 verses 20 to 25. Write that down guys. Before Jesus was born, the angel of God had appeared to his mother Mary and told her that God had placed a baby in her belly. She was to name him Jesus and he would be the saviour of the world. Well, Joseph, Mary's fiancé, was having a difficult time believing this. He wasn't sure how to handle a fiancé who thinks she's seeing angels and having God's son. Sounds a bit loopy, doesn't it? He decided he would just break off his engagement to Mary very quietly. He didn't want to bring any shame upon Mary at all. He loved her, but was just very confused about it all. Just when Joseph was going to break off his engagement, guess who appeared to him as well? You got it, that angel. That's right, the angel appeared to him and told him, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Joseph was a little scared by the angel appearing out of nowhere, as we all would be, I am sure, but he listened very carefully as the angel gave him God's instructions. The angel gave him the instructions that she was going to give birth to a son and that he was to name him Jesus. Now you have to understand something. Back in those days, the name you gave a child was very important. It carried meaning with it. Joseph had probably already thought about the name that he was going to actually give his firstborn son and now the angel was telling him that God had already picked out his name. It would have been easy for Joseph to say no. He could have ignored the angel's instructions and just continued with his plan to break off his engagement with Mary. But that's not what he did at all. Joseph did exactly as the angel told him to do. He obeyed, even though it meant that everyone else would not understand. He obeyed God's plan, even though it was a hard thing to do. And because of his obedience, Joseph became the earthly father of Jesus. How great would that be? In your lesson today, you're going to learn about how God is our everlasting father. And he will always love us and he will never leave us. Come on in. Welcome to Pumpernickels. Good to see you. Hey kids, it's me. Happy, Happy Helperton, your favorite greeter at your local Pumpernickel store where everything is just one nickel. Today I'm here to direct you to today's power verse, which is, see how very much our father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. 1 John 3, 1. Well, deck my halls, that power verse was great. Now, what I need is for all my girls to stand up to their feet and say the power verse with me on the count of three. Ready, girls? Here we go. One, two, three. See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. 1 John 3, 1. All right, now girls, you sit down and all my boys stand to their feet and say the power verse with me on three. Ready? One, two, three. See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. 1 John 3, 1. Great job, you can be seated. Now, I don't know if this has ever happened to you kids, but have any of you ever gotten lost, like if you were at an amusement park or a very large store? Well, at Pumpernickels, believe it or not, it happens all the time. And just last week, I'm just standing there greeting and directing people, and wouldn't you know, I hear this sniffling and this crying right behind me. I turn around and I saw this little kid, he's just wiping tears from his eyes and he said, I can't find my daddy, where's my daddy? And I told him, it's okay, it's okay child, I'll help you find your daddy. So I took him by his hand and we just started trotting along, looking down aisle after aisle. And wouldn't you know, once I got to aisle 15 by the Yuletide skillets, there was his father picking up another dozen. 
so I walked him down to his father. He broke free from my hand. He was so excited. He wiped the tears from his eyes, stuck out his hands and said, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And he grabbed his father and his father picked him up and swirled him around. It was such a beautiful, happy sight. I saw that and I said, isn't that just like our father? He's so good. Our everlasting father. Ah, touching story. All right, kids. Everybody stand to your feet and let's say that power verse on the count of three. You ready? One, two, three. See how very much our father loves us. For he calls us his children, and that is what we are. 1 John 3, 1. Great job, kids. You can all be seated. Well, Happy's got to go help the customers. So, until next time, remember, during this season, don't make a fuss. Have a happy, happy, happy Christmas. Bye, kids. <laughs>
And I want to talk to you about the traditional colour of a candy cane. Did you know that most candy canes started off red and white, just like this one? And there's a meaning behind the colours. So the white means that Jesus was born holy. And the red represents the fact that he was whipped and beaten and bled and died for us. Crazy how this innocent, simple candy cane has so much meaning behind it. I never knew this stuff. It's so cool to hear the new meaning that we can take into Christmas with a candy cane. I'm here to tell you today that I have no news for you. None, none at all, no news. But I want to remind you that we only have a couple of weeks left. We are so close to the end of the year, so close to Christmas. That's why we're using candy canes and all of this other stuff to enjoy throughout this time. So remember, we have our clinker challenge still going. So if you want to guess, get in quick. Send in a new guess, a different color each week, or you can send in a first guess if you haven't guessed yet. If you have already guessed, you can change your colour each week, anytime you want. You just need to email marie at marie at unihillchurch.com.au. Also, if you have a joke that you want shared, send it quick. We have been loving hearing all of your jokes. You guys are hilarious. I don't have jokes like that, so keep them coming. I'm super excited for them. Right now, though, I'm going to get ready for my clinker challenge. Okay, I have my bag of clinkers. Now, I have a personal favourite. Pink is my favourite. I don't like green so much. All right, let's see what colour it could be. I'm hoping for pink. Let's see. Oh, it's green, guys. Green today. I'm going to, I think I'll finish it off later. Right now, I'm just going to pass my candy cane on and I'll see you guys soon. Well, look at that, a candy cane. And you know what sort of candy candy canes are? They're called rock candy because you can break a tooth on one. What a great thing to do in Christmas, having to visit the dentist. So be very careful with your candy canes. You know, candy, or rather candy canes, are made of rock candy. And that reminds me of something. Jesus is called the rock of our salvation. In fact, we are told to stand on the rock and I wonder what could that mean? But then I think of that time when I went to the beach about, around about Christmas time we went to Blair Gowrie. It was a rocky beach and I was examining the rock pools and all of a sudden some huge waves came and they washed me off my feet. I almost drowned. I was so upset. I was so upset because nobody was sympathetic and I lost my thongs in the water. But I was thinking, if I had been standing on those rocks, you know, the water rushed around them, the water pushed and smashed against those rocks, but those rocks weren't moved. They were the safe place for me to stand. I should have stood on the rock and I would not have been swept away by what was happening around me. And just like that, we are told, to stand on the rock, stand on Jesus. Because you know, when you're with him and you belong to Jesus, you are in a very safe place. So put your trust in him. Now, candy is a lovely thing, except when you're breaking your tooth, of course. But it's even better to share with other people. I know you would wanna give candy canes to your friends, to your family, to maybe your neighbours, because we want to do good things to the people we know and love. Well, you know, there's something else that's good that you can do at Christmas time. You can tell your friends, you can tell your family, you can tell your neighbours about Jesus. He's the reason we have Christmas. He's the reason we have candy canes. And actually, he's better than candy canes. I think 
If you love your friends and family and neighbours, you will want them to know about Jesus too. So make a point that you will do that this Christmas. Now it is time for our draw. And the colour this week is green. Who chose green? Was it you? Because there's quite a few in here and I'm going to select one now. I wonder if you will be the lucky winner. It is Joy! Hang on. Joy, did you win once before? Fantastic. Green was a good choice. Well, your prize is now on its way.